Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video. This is going to be my Game of Thrones Season 8 Episode 1 review and breakdown. I'm so excited to talk about Game of Thrones with you guys. It's finally here. I love the show. I watched this this morning. Sorry that it's not out at the same time as all the other American YouTubers and websites. I'm English. It comes on really late at night. So I watched it this morning and wow, what a great episode. Okay, so let's get into today's video. So this is my breakdown and review. More of a breakdown, more so. So I really enjoyed this episode. It was such a great joy to have Game of Thrones back because again, we haven't had it in a long, long time. And I only started watching at the start of season seven. So I was pretty late to the game, but I got obsessed with it and I binge watched it in like a week or so. Like that's how obsessed I was. But additionally, so I put I up a poll for what your favorite Game of Thrones character now is. So, so go into Game of Thrones Amino and put in your favorite. Week to week. So we're going to go through the episode, but not necessarily chronologically, like bits are chronologically, but I think we're going to jump to some of the big bits as we go along in this video. So, the opening. It's new. It's brand new and that was reported after the premiere and it's a really, really nice new intro. It sort of gave me chills because of the new updates and I guess just, you know, the Game of Thrones music finally coming back onto my screen. And so you see it essentially from the Night King's perspective. We see the ice sort of going over the ground and stuff like that. So. It's not the normal intro, it's very new. And so, we go on to this episode, and so this is actually jumping towards the end of the episode. This was a major moment that I wanted to touch upon straight away, is that Samuel Tarly reveals to Jon Snow that he's in fact not supposed to be a Snow, he's not a bastard, but in fact he is a Targaryen. We got that revealed at the end of last season, but it was such a shocking moment that they actually revealed it. I thought they would have prolonged it until another episode, but it was crazy. It was jaw-dropping and John was speechless and this was just such a WTF moment that I thought, wow, this is what Game of Thrones is all about and he is the true heir to the throne and Samwell, after getting this massive reveal of Daenerys actually killing his father and brother, he starts to question whether she would be the perfect queen and he tries to essentially say, oh, you're the heir to the throne, you would make the better decisions, you would actually be acting in a proper king-like way, unlike what he thinks that Daenerys would be as a queen, because obviously now finding out that she sort of lawlessly just slaughtered his family, he doesn't really trust her, and that's with obviously good reason. So at the start of the episode, we had John and Daenerys finally arriving in Winterfell as they marched on with the Unsullied and all their armies. So everyone is sort of recouping in Winterfell because of the Night King's army actually marching upon down further south. And we'll talk about that in a second. But we get to see the Northern Lords who are still pissed at John for his alliance and his allegiance essentially for a Targaryen because they do not trust any Targaryens and so that's why Ned Stark never actually revealed that Jon was a Targaryen because of if you know the Northern Lords found out that they were housing a Targaryen they would have probably killed him actually like without a doubt so they have a complete sort of sneering attitude towards Daenerys but they have to sort of respect her in a way because Jon their king in the north actually bent the knee to her so that's a really interesting setup for a lot of tension this season so it sets up also a reminder of Lord Umber and that he exists because again if you haven't recapped and watched all the past episodes you I barely think anyone would remember essentially who all these small little characters are but you know he gets a scene in the episode with Lord Umber and it's a funny moment but this foreshadows his death later in the episode by the Night King and so let's talk about that right now. That was probably the best scene in the episode. It was jaw dropping. You see him as part of the undead. His eyes are glowing and he starts shrieking as they set him on fire and you see the Night King's warning message actually be like a wall of painted corpses essentially and he's stuck in the middle of it. It was horrifying. It's straight out of a horror film really loved that moment and it also adds up to the fact that the Night King is actually more intelligent than, than you may have thought because 
when I think of the Night King, I don't really think of him as like a soldier, like, you know, going forward and just killing everyone. Although he is silent, I've never actually seen him do anything as quite intelligent as, say, leaving a warning message like this. We've never seen that, so that's interesting, and I like that part in the episode quite a lot. So the Night King is halfway between the Wall and Winterfell as they march down south, well obviously further down south towards the north, but not, you know, way up north. And so that was a big reveal in the episode that they're actually getting quite close, and we're going to have the big episode where we see the massive fight, I believe it's episode 3 they said, so look forward to that. Alright, so John and Arya reunite at the start of the episode. It's a bunch of other reunions with all the different characters, mainly that being Arya and the Hound and also Gendry in this episode. The reunion between John and Arya is a callback to season 1 with their hug during one of the previous early episodes and obviously with Needle and she being like, oh, I've killed a few people, like one or two but obviously we know she's killed a lot of people, but maybe not all by needle. It's been a while though. So then we move on and Arya visits Gendry towards the end of the episode and she wants to get this new sword as far as I could tell. I couldn't really see it exactly, but let me know if you actually spotted what exactly it was, but essentially a new weapon for her, I guess when the undead obviously come down further north or further south in this case. And so Jamie arrives at Winterfell. This is right at the end of the episode, so like I said, not chronologically going through this, but he arrives and Bran is waiting for him. It was referenced at the start of the episode or like midway through saying that, oh, I'm waiting for a friend. That's what Bran says. And so finally Jamie arrives. He gets off his horse. At first I thought it was the Night King or one of his soldiers, you know, pretending because they he had a massive, massive hood on. You had no idea who it was, but we were just tracking with the camera. And so it's revealed to be Jamie, and Jamie sees Bran, and he's like, oh shit. So that's what happens at the end of the episode. That sets up Jamie being on trial next episode, and whether or not they can trust him or not, because he's come north to help them. And obviously Tyrion is very wrong in this episode because he's trying to convince everyone, oh, Cersei's going to help us, she's going to come up north, but she's obviously not, as it was revealed at the end of last season when Jaime went to travel north, and he's going to reveal that most likely next episode. So the Golden Company arrive down in King's Landing, and so we see the return of Theon Greyjoy, which was a really really nice moment and he rescues Yara from the Golden Company and he's going to head up north and he's going to help the Starks, he's going to help Jon Snow defeat the Night King's army and Yara is going to actually go back to the island and start protecting it because you know when the Night King's army have inevitably come down south past Winterfell someone needs to be there to protect their island and so Cersei is still in her own bubble, she's still in denial, well not really in denial, but she's sort of like, mm, yeah, whatever, they can deal with them up north and, you know, once they defeat them, we'll defeat them after that. And so that's where I think, obviously, Jamie's going to come in next episode telling them, like, no, Cersei's not going to help you at all, you're so wrong, Tyrion. And so we see Bronn, and Bronn returns, it's really nice to see him again, and we see that Cersei wants him to kill Jamie and Tyrion using the crossbow that killed her father, a bit of poetic justice as they say. And so Jon and Daenerys share a really nice intimate scene in the wilderness with the dragons and the dragons sort of just stare at them weirdly when they actually kiss which is a really great moment in this episode, I really like that. And so obviously with the reveal at the end of the episode to Jon that he's a Targaryen, he's going to be like, oh shit that's my aunt, what am I doing? And I'm looking forward to all of that drama in the upcoming episodes. And so that's about it for this Game of Thrones video. Please be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications to not miss any Game of Thrones videos because I'm going to be making videos every week doing reviews and breakdowns for Game of Thrones because I love it. So if you could share this around, tell people that I'm doing Game of Thrones videos and you enjoyed this, please be sure to share it around on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, whatever you are sharing it around, even to your real life friends, be like, yo, watch the DC TV show, he's doing Game of Thrones videos. That would mean so much to me. So thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys later. Goodbye.